up. Got a decently big update for you. Let me turn the camera around. As you can see, the tire is back on. It's not on jack stands anymore. There's no jack under it. I got all the parts I had installed. Um, I finished it up a few days ago. I didn't really run into any hiccups. I just was waiting for parts to come in. Um, they all came in and I, uh, I put them on. So let's do a little walk around now that everything's on. I don't know if I ever showed these in a video yet, but or maybe I have. I put the uh, black housing headlights in. My other ones that are sitting over there were super faded. And I hit the fog lights with the yellow Vans paint. I still need to get a fog light, um, not a fog light, a fucking uh, tow hook cover because the previous owner wanted to be super JDM, so he took the fog light, God, not the, he took the tow hook cover off and ran a tow hook 24 seven, like an idiot. So took that out. Now I just need to get the tow hook cover that matches this color body, the platinum silver. So we'll go into the interior first. Oh, and I added a keyless entry. Mine didn't come with a remote, so I bought a remote and programmed it. It's nice. Let me turn this LED on really quick. Uh, of course, it's stuck on everything. Okay. So, as you can see, I got the STI seats in. They're pretty nice. There was a direct bolt-on uh, mod. The brackets down here were kind of bent from shipping, so I had to hammer them back into place, but four bolts a piece, they're sturdy. Nice, I like them way better than the WRX seats, especially the way they look. Um, you guys have already seen this, but I'll show you again. Got my Sparco wheel in, and I got the STI gauge cluster in there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you the exhaust because the car's kind of at a weird angle right now. That's enough light. I'll just show you this gauge sweep one more time because I'm obsessed with it. Mm. God, I love that. <laughs> But yeah, besides that, let me pop the hood, show you what that looks like. Cause I believe last time you saw it, turn the Kodak down. <laughs> last time you saw it, it was kind of pulled apart cause I was waiting on the valve cover gaskets. <sighs> Boom. So that's what it looks like completed. Got the DC cold air intake that sits behind the fender down there. I heat wrapped it or used the heat reflective tape on it. I bought the DC cause it was the cheapest of the cold, actual cold air intake kits. It's not, I don't like the hot air ones that just sit in the engine bay right here. Um, and I didn't see any negative reviews about it. It's pretty much the same design as every other cold air intake that sits, uh, inside of the fender so i went ahead and got it install was easy it is carb exempt if you live in california i don't so i don't have to worry about that bullshit um i got the downpipe installed can't really see that can you um got the up pipe installed you won't be able to see that and then got my gritty my gritty tic on there it was a little rusty, but I can clean it up a bit. So yeah, besides that, that's about all that's done. Um, I stage two flashed it. Now I'm official stage two, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a, uh, I've never started with a stock WRX or STI. 
So it was nice to have that comparison because when I went from stock to stage one, I didn't even feel it at all. But from stage one to stage two, it was night and day. Because when you do the up pipe and the down pipe, the Catless versions at least, it gets rid of all of those restrictions on the turbo. And then I had the stock uh, intake system too. So that was robbing me a little bit. So now that everything's opened up, the spool is much quicker um, and the power overall is uh, a lot better over the entire power band. It was a lot more than I expected because I've had 450 wheel horsepower uh, STIs. I've had a 400 wheel horsepower Evo 10, if you go back into my channel. I've had a lot of different cars, um, but this, I, I really like this. It's light. Um, I'm still in the process of cleanly gutting it. So back in the trunk, I actually painted that and it looks really good and it's the paint stops like right here. You can see where it goes to a different tone. So I still need to do that right here. I'll wipe it down and tape off what I need to tape off and paint it. But even for being gutted, it's actually pretty quiet. Um, when it rains, I can hear the rain um, getting kicked up from the tire and hitting the inside of the, the wheel well here. But that's about as noisy as it gets. Um, my exhaust is resonated, but it's still pretty loud. It's the Gretti TIC, but inside there's pretty much no drone. It sounds really nice. I thought it would be louder when I gutted it, and I'm glad it's not, because it's still tolerable, and I can drive it on a daily basis if I want to, but I don't think I'm gonna be doing much of that. Um, so I think that's it for now. Upcoming future plans. Honestly, it kind of just depends on what happens to the car. I'm not sure how much longer the engine and transmission is going to last. They're both on 190,000 miles. Um, I know the center disc going out. I can hear it, but it still drives fine. And it's not making too bad of a noise. It's just the bearing, so it's whining a little bit as the RPMs increase. Um, so if something grenades... That's obviously going to push my plans for the EJ207 swap, or maybe an EJ257 swap. I'm not really sure which route I want to go yet. Um, definitely going to do a six-speed, though. And the thing is, like, I want to do just the six-speed, just so I could have a strong transmission, because I don't really care about having a super high horsepower build. That's never been fun to me. I've always liked quick, responsive builds that do well in corners, and I don't have to wait for the boost. Um, but if I do a six speed, I want the Brimbos and I want the hubs and it's five by one fourteen, yada, yada, yada. And then you have to change everything anyway. So I kind of want to just do it in one, one go. I don't want to be pulling this apart over and over and over again. Um, so I'm not sure when that's going to happen. It's, it feels, the motor feels pretty stout. It sounds stout. There's no tick of any kind. Um, usually they even have, have like a little bit of a tick, but all that is is the injectors. Um, it sounds really healthy, even with the mileage, so I'm not sure how long it'll last, but we'll see, so. And then again, like I said, with the, when you do the hub swap and all that stuff, if you don't do an 04, which is still the 5x100, if you do the STI, the 04, if I do anything besides that STI, it's, it swaps to 5x114, so I don't want to get wheels for this out of 5x100 and then end up having to go to 5x114, because I'm not going to run adapters. I hate that. So, yeah, things are kind of up in the air right now. Um, I'll make an update on kind of where my head's at as time slowly goes on. Um, the weather is shit here in Oregon. Um, so when it, it starts warming up a little bit, we'll get some action vids going. But uh, I just wanted to show you guys how it sits now. Um, there is one little pain in my ass. The... You can't really, oh, I guess you can kind of see it, but right there, the valve cover has a breather on it, um, an air oil breather vent, I guess, and it has a gasket, and the gasket didn't come with my fucking valve cover gasket set, so I was like, fuck it, I'll just use some RTV <laughs> on top of the old gasket. That didn't work. It's not leaking super bad, but I can see the, the uh, oil bubbles starting to come out when I did the first drive. Um, so I'm gonna, I ordered the gasket, so I'm gonna take that off, scrape all the RTV off, and then redo just the breather. I can take the breather off without taking the valve cover off, thank God. Um, but from what I've seen, the valve cover's cover isn't leaking anymore. 
which is good because when you pull it to a light and you stop and the fucking oil drops onto your exhaust and starts smoking out the hood, you look like an idiot. So I'm glad I got that fixed. Um, yeah, I might buy a new battery. I know, not exciting, but this one, when I had my access port hooked up to it, was barely giving it enough juice um, for my access port to allow the tune to be switched over because if you don't have enough juice, it'll just not let you do it because it doesn't want you to brick your ECU. So yeah, just uh, more maintenance mods, more reliability mods. I'll probably do a Koyo radiator in the next month or so. Um, so yeah, we're doing reliability for now and then we're gonna see how hard I can push it at the track and on the back rows and we'll see if it lasts. If it doesn't, you already know it's swap time. So I'll keep you guys updated. Thanks for watching.